Hello everybody, I am Georgiana Ionita Toader and we are now on Dece News, Dece Medical and Dece News TV. We have recently launched a new series of debates related to harm reduction in our everyday life. The most recent debate on this topic was dedicated to the reduction of pollution-related risks, green investments, air quality improvement methods, and today we will discuss about tobacco harm reduction and the role of non-combustible tobacco products. Într-o lume în schimbare, industria globală a tutunului nu face excepție, iar inovația își pune din ce în ce mai accentuată amprenta pe marile companii din domeniu care și-au propus utilizarea tehnologiei inovatoare pentru dezvoltarea de produse alternative cu risc redus față de fumat. Reducerea efectelor asociate fumatului reprezintă o strategie de sănătate publică care recunoaște riscurile asociate consumului de țigări prin ardere și urmărește să minimizeze impactul fumatului asupra sănătății, încurajând acei fumători adulți care altfel ar continua să fumeze să treacă complet la produse alternative cu risc redus, fundamentate științific. BAT, una dintre cele mai mari companii internaționale din acest sector, avansează în ritm accelerat în ceea ce privește reducerea impactului sănătății, oferind astăzi consumatorilor un portofoliu diversificat de produse cu risc redus care nu implică arderea tutunului. La nivel global, BAT investește circa 350 de milioane de lire sterline anual în dezvoltarea noilor tipuri de produse cu tutun și nicotină, care evoluează în linie cu schimbările tehnologice și științifice, dar și cu preferințele consumatorilor. BAT încurajează pe cei care continuă să fumeze să facă trecerea complet la alternative cu risc redus dovedit științific, obiectivul companiei fiind ca 50 de milioane de consumatori să aleagă produsele sale care nu implică arderea tutunului până în 2030 și de a genera venituri de 5 miliarde de lire sterline din noile categorii până în 2025. În România, BAT este cel mai mare jucător din segmentul tutunului, cu o cotă de piață de peste 50%. Potrivit datelor anunțate de companie, în cei 25 de ani de prezență pe plan local, BAT a generat un impact de peste 125 de miliarde de euro în economie. Am discutat cu Samar Hanna, Head of Scientific Regulatory Engagement în cadrul BAT, despre portofoliul noilor categorii de produse BAT, despre cele mai recente noutăți care fundamentează adoptarea de politici sustenabile pentru reducerea riscurilor asociate fumatului, precum și despre abordarea unor discuții echilibrate și argumentate despre risc în contextul avansului tehnologic și științific al ultimilor ani. Today we are talking about tobacco harm reduction, a topic intensely debated in the recent years, especially among the scientific community and regulators. Samar Hanna, Head of Scientific Regulatory Engagement from BAT, is here today with us and she is going to explain how we can reduce the risks associated with smoking, the latest developments of the BAT in this area and what a better tomorrow looks like. Hello Samar, how are you today? Doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So let's go straight to our topic today and the first question. In a fast changing world, technology is helping reach progress in so many areas. What is BET's approach in what regards the use of technology for reducing the risks associated with smoking? What I think is really exciting about BAT's use of technology in reducing the health impacts of smoking is that we've really embraced technology as an organization to find satisfying alternatives to cigarette smoking for our consumers. So if you look at our portfolio, we have, for example, our vapor products, also known as electronic cigarettes, and using the, the advent of technology and microprocessors, um, electronics, providing a satisfying alternative for smokers who choose to quit. Then with our tobacco heating products, very similarly, utilizing technology there to provide satisfying alternatives for adult tobacco consumers. And so I just think it's a really exciting time to be part of the organization and see that change. Um, BAT has carried out over 300 studies for GLOW in various research area. In 2022, BAT released the results of one of them, highlighting the long-term positive effects of replacing smoking with non-combustible tobacco products. Can you detail the results of this study? Sure. I think that you're referring to what we call our GLOW 360-day study. So in that, what we did is that we followed a group of subjects who we moved one subject group from switching to tobacco heating product, 
uh, one who abstinence only, who indicated they were interested in quitting, and one who continued to smoke cigarettes. And what we did is that we tracked their biomarkers, so biomarkers of potential harm and biomarkers of exposure over a year. These people were allowed to use their products as they would anything out in the normal world in their day-to-day -day lives. So we got to really capture what it looks like to see how a consumer truly uses those products. And what we saw is that in those individuals who move to a tobacco heating product, that their biomarkers of potential harm and their biomarkers of exposure were significantly reduced when they completely switched to a tobacco heating product. And in some instances, we saw outcomes that were similar in terms of reduced biomarkers that were comparable to cessation or quitting smoking completely. What are the long-term benefits that consumers can see? I think it's really in terms of public health and the reduction of disease burden associated with smoking. When you think about tobacco heating products like GLOW, the, the big difference there is that there's no burning. Most of the diseases that are associated with cigarette smoking are because of the exposure to combustion. When you have a tobacco heating product, you've removed that combustion because tobacco heating products, they heat the product enough to deliver nicotine flavors, but they don't burn. So then you're reducing your exposure to toxicants by approximately 95%. Uh, speaking of that, the same BET study shows that GLOW users achieved significant and sustained improvements in several indicators of potential risks associated with early developments of disease, including lung disease, cancer, and cardiovascular disease, compared who, to those who continue to smoke. Specifically, what are the indicators highlighting the risk decrease for those who switched from smoking to products that do not involve tobacco combustion? So we followed biomarkers, which are different markers in the body that can be tracked primarily through things like blood and urine. And so we collect those from individuals over time through the course of the study. And so those biomarkers, those markers in the human body that were associated with cardiovascular disease, COPD, lung cancer, general inflammation were what we were tracking over time. And in all of those instances, we saw those significantly reduced. Uh, so somehow you already respond to that, but I would like you to answer us in simple terms. What are the differences between smoking cigarettes and using uh, products that do not involve tobacco combustion? I think the simplest difference is that lack of burning. So like we talked about before, the primary driver of disease in cigarette smoking is the exposure to combustion. When you remove that burning, you remove approximately 95% of the risk associated with the use of nicotine. So that's why in our GLOW 360 day study, you see those biomarkers reduce so significantly over time. So this is how uh, these products work. Um, what should users and regulators know about these products today? I think that the primary thing, again, is that you're removing the burning. And with that, you've significantly reduced the risk associated with the use of the product. Okay. BAT's portfolio includes a wide range of reduced risk products. Can you offer us more details on how BAT's portfolio has evolved in the recent years? And what are the differences between all the types of available products and how can consumers choose the product that best suits them? BAT's portfolio right now is what we refer to as lots of different types of products for lots of different people. So we really seek to try to provide consumers as many different options as possible to move away from cigarette smoking. If you look at our portfolio, you have our tobacco heating products like GLOW, you have our electronic cigarette products, then our oral nicotine products. And that provides adult consumers a wide range of opportunities to really find what works best for them. And we've seen that really come to life. You know, This year alone, we have 24 million users of reduced risk products in our BAT portfolio. And we're on track to continue to reach our goal of 50 million consumers of reduced risk products by 2030. Uh, from a sustainability perspective, what does the used product uh, that do not involve burning uh, tobacco mean for the environment? Uh, BAT's commitment to sustainability uh, is 
throughout everything that we do. I think one thing that we're really excited about is our reduction of our use of plastics. If you look at our portfolio, 92% of our products, our packaging is able to be recycled and reducing that environmental impact and associated with landfill use. What are the key messages for regulators who make policies regarding the new category products? I think the key messages for regulators continue to be that in the regulation of tobacco and nicotine products, really that regulation is best fit when you consider the actual risk reduction potential of, of what we would call our new categories or reduced risk products. And those products really ideally being regulated in a way that reflects their reduction in risk as compared to cigarettes. Um, the world around us is evolving and so it's uh, the tobacco sector, which is under continuous transformation. What innovations are we expecting from VAT in the next period? I think from an innovation standpoint, we continue to work to make our reduced risk products a satisfying alternative to cigarettes. Um, we continue to try to develop you know, flavors and products that meet consumers where they are on their journey and, and we'll We'll continue to work towards that commitment. In terms of science and innovation, what volume of invest investments are we talking about? And uh, our, we would like to know how many people work in science and uh, in innovation at BAT. We have over 1,500 R&D scientists across BAT and our global research centers. We have a sustained financial commitment to the generation of science and the production of reduced risk products globally. Uh, you can see in everything that we do that we're taking it seriously and, and really committed to that transformation journey. All of those scientists come from a variety of backgrounds. Uh, we have people who come from fast-moving consumer goods, devices, technology, um, academia, the medical profession. So it's really an incredibly varied group of research professionals who are committed to our reduced risk product portfolio. How would you describe the world and consumers today and tomorrow how is the world changing and how is BAT adapting to that? Oh, wow. Uh, it's, it's such an incredible transformation journey. I've been with the organization for 12 years. Uh, when I joined Reynolds or BAT um, with, within the group, at that time, we were primarily a, just a traditional tobacco company. Uh, vapor products or electronic cigarettes had just come into play, no one really knew anything about them or what they could really do. If you fast forward over the duration of my career, everything's incredibly different. We have electronic cigarettes, we have tobacco heating products, we have the tobacco-free oral nicotine products, and none of those things existed for consumers in the way that they do today. And it's just been an incredible transformation to be a part of to see that. And I think it's reflective of the the world at large, when you look at the way that there have been these really disruptive technologies that have come in and just changed the way we think about everything. And I think BAT's portfolio is reflective of that same shift worldwide. That's so nice. Um, how would you describe a better tomorrow? What are the BAT's goals for the, for the next years? Yeah, I think that a uh, better tomorrow, it really is it's reflective of everything that we're trying to achieve, trying to move smokers away from combusted cigarettes into products that reduce their disease risk. Uh, it's, it's everything about our company design and makeup, how we operate and how we think about doing the right thing and that commitment to providing adult tobacco consumers a reduced risk opportunity. Samar, thank you so much for all the information. Thank you for being so, um, I don't know, uh, efficiently with, uh, with all the information that you gave us today. So thank you again for being thank here you. with us uh, with the help of the technology. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. And thank you for watching us and have a nice day.